Okay, so having seen the theory behind the calculation of eigenvalues and eigenvectors and having seen some examples, one could say that you are ready, we could get this, get this chapter over, right? This is all it, there is to know. But that's not true. We still have to do lots of things in this chapter. Mainly, we have to look at the applications of eigenvectors and eigenvalues, mostly the application of diagonalization of matrices. But even before that, we still have to look at some more examples of matrices in which we calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors, because we are going to look at patterns that emerge. Okay, this is all, you know that maths is all about looking for patterns. So indeed, there are some patterns related to the generate eigenvalues. Okay, so let's look some examples of matrices in which we calculate their eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and let's try to find these patterns. In this table, I have written three examples of three matrices here on the first row, and I have the following row. So here we have the, the original matrix, then here I wrote the characteristic polynomial already with the roots, with the, it's already factorized into its roots. And therefore we know the eigenvalues. And then for each eigenvalue, what are the eigenvectors? By the way, this example we did in, in our last video, right? And the other examples are solved in the notes, if you want to look at them. But notice something interesting. In this first matrix here on the left, we found the characteristic polynomial and we had two roots, meaning that we had two eigenvalues, okay? And now from each eigenvalue, we found one eigenvector, okay? So one to one. However, in this other example that we did in the previous video, the characteristic polynomial had this and these two roots were repeated. You remember that, right? And therefore I said that the first two eigenvalues were degenerate eigenvalues. Okay, so let me introduce you the concept of algebraic multiplicity, which is simply how many times this eigenvalue is repeated as a root in the characteristic polynomial. So this eigenvalue lambda equals one has an algebraic multiplicity of two because it appears twice as a root in the characteristic polynomial. Okay, while the other eigenvalue lambda equals minus one only appears once, so its algebraic multiplicity is equal to one. And now, if you remember, when we calculated the eigenvectors for the eigenvalues, this eigenvalue, which had a multiplicity of two, you actually found two eigenvectors. Remember that? We found an eigenspace that was a plane. It was not a line. While for the eigenvalue minus one, which had a multiplicity of one, we only found one eigenvector. So maybe you could find here a pattern and say, wait a second, maybe whenever we have a repeated eigenvalue, a degenerate eigenvalue, then we find as many eigenvectors as times it's repeated, right? You could think so, but you would be wrong. And for this, I have this example, really simple example of a two by two matrix, which has two degenerate eigenvalues, and those are the only eigenvalues it has. So it has one single eigenvalue, and its algebraic multiplicity is two. And yet, when you calculate the eigenvectors, you only find one eigenvector you don't find two, okay? So it would be wrong to say that the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue is related to how many eigenvectors you find for that eigenvalue. By the way, by the, way the number of eigenvectors that you find for each eigenvalue is called the, geometri the geometric multiplicity, okay? So in this case, the geometric multiplicity was two, and in all other cases, the geometric multiplicity is one. Okay, so what's the pattern here? What is the rule? So let me write it as clearly as possible. So when you have the generate eigenvalues, you can define the following things. Algebraic multiplicity. This is the number of times that the root is repeated. Then you can always also define the geometric multiplicity. And that is the number of degrees of freedom in the solution when you solve for a times v equals lambda times v. So the number of degrees of freedom or the number of free parameters, or the, in other words, the number of eigenvectors for associated to this eigenvalue. Okay, that's the geometric multiplicity.
equals okay and the pattern or the general rule is the following Okay, this is a very, very simple rule. So the geometric multiplicity is smaller than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity. And both are always uh, bigger or equal to one. Yeah. So this means that when the algebraic multiplicity is one, the geometric multiplicity can only be one, it cannot be two, because it, it always has to be smaller than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity, okay? So one always gives rise to one eigenvector, like here, like here, and that's it. Now, when you have an algebraic multiplicity bigger than one, for example, two, you can either have two eigenvectors, so geometric multiplicity two, or you might have one eigenvector, okay? If the algebraic multiplicity was three, you could have three eigenvectors or two eigenvectors or one eigenvector and so on, okay? So the number of eigenvectors is smaller than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity. Next, there is a almost more important thing to note. Whenever you find eigenvectors that are associated to different eigenvalues. So for example, this eigenvector is associated to this eigenvalue, while this eigenvector is associated to this one. And these two are different. Whenever that happens, so these are eigenvectors associated to different eigenvalues, then necessarily the eigenvectors must be linearly independent from each other, okay? So you can never find two eigenvectors associated with different eigenvalues that are linearly dependent. Okay, the same here. So here we have two eigen, eigenvalues. So this means that this eigenvector is necessarily linearly independent from these two. Okay, so this eigenvector has to be linearly independent from these two. And here we only have one eigenvalue, so this eigenvector we cannot say anything about it. Okay, so let me write that down. When you have non degenerate eigenvalues, so the, the eigenvalues associated to different, the eigenvectors associated to different eigenvalues. So non-degenerate eigenvalues are always associated with linearly independent eigenvectors. Okay, so non-degenerate eigenvalues are always associated with linearly independent eigenvectors. If you want to know why all of this is true, I recommend you look into the recommended books for the module where there might be proofs for these results, okay? But a warning that the proofs are not trivial, yeah? They, are, they can be quite difficult to follow. They are difficult proofs. But always the proofs that are more difficult are associated with the more elegant results, which are this kind of results. Okay, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.